unless you live inside a cave, you most likely have the experience before of using softwares. Now, some of them are used for design, like SOLIDWORKS, Splinter, etc. Now, these softwares offer the option to use the mouse to rotate around your object. It's a very much a key component to view it and move it around in 2D or even in 3D space. So with that in mind, this video will show you how you can handle mouse events in PyOpenGL, starting from a 2D case where we will try to rotate a 2D better. triangle. We can actually zoom out or zoom in, as well as rotate our triangle. And then try to actually view a 3D STL file. Then we have our sphere. There is a rotation along the X axis, and then a rotation along the Y axis. So take a seat, have some nature sound as background music, and enjoy watching. Okay, here we are in our Visual Studio Code interface. I've created a file called Basic Movements, where we will first initially see how to do the primary movements in Python, which are the translation and rotation. We've already seen how to make an empty scene in the part 1 of our video right here. So I'll be just copying our previous code and then pasting it. You can find it in the description if you don't have it. But basically we import our modules of Pygame and OpenGL. We initialize our scene using the Pygame display function and specifying the double buff OpenGL flags. We define our main loop where we will run our OpenGL scene, checking for the close events, clearing the screen as well as drawing it, and then updating our screen. Now if we would run this code, you'll see that it generates an empty scene. Now, to start off, now let's define a triangle that is centered around our coordinate system. So let's call it triangle object to render. This will be the coordinates of our triangle. We have defined with, again, three vertices. Now instead of using the GL begin and GL end to draw our triangle, I'll actually define a function right here called draw triangle, which takes as an input a triangle, like so. So we will do a GL begin and GL end, specifying the color of our triangle and drawing each vertex of our triangle using the GL vertex 3FV. Now the GL 3FV takes as input a 3D vector, which is a vertex made of X, Y, and Z coordinates. So let's call the function draw triangle of the triangle we just created, which is here. Okay, now let's rerun. Now you can see that we still cannot see our triangle. There is two possible reasons for that. Either because our triangle is actually defined on the z equals zero plane. It's right on top of our viewpoint. So we can either shift it by minus five along the z axis. Now you can see here. Or instead of changing it, we can change our viewpoint in itself by doing a gl translate specifying zero, zero, and then minus five. And then you can see it gives the same result. Okay, now, talking about this GL translate, it's actually this function right here that will create a translation movement of our object, as well as the GL rotate. Now, to add movements to our scene, we have to come all the way down to our while loop, since we want to update each frame with a new movement. After clearing our screen, we do a GL translate specifying a certain amount along the X, the Y, and Z. For example, here we only want to translate along the positive side of X. If we would run our code, we will see that our triangle just vanished. Let's decrease it a little further. Now you can see it's slowly moving away. Now, the object in itself is not moving. It's actually our point of view that is moving. If, for example, we try to move along the z-axis trying to zoom in. You will see that our point of view is slowly approaching our object until disappearing completely. You will notice that there is multiple GL translate function. You have the GL translate, the GL translate D, and the GL translate F. So basically they're the same in the way that they make our point of view translate with a certain x, y, and z amount. The only difference is that translate F is a single precision translation, whereas translate D is a double precision translation. This means that if you want a really precise translation that uses double precision, you can use the D, or you can just use the F, or if you don't want precision at all, you can just use the normal regular translate. 
Now in a nutshell they do the same thing, so you don't have to worry about. You can choose either a F, D or nothing. I usually choose the single precision translation. Alright, so let's remove this. Now we saw the translation function. There is also the same for the rotate function. There is also a normal rotate, a double precision rotate and then a single precision rotate. We will use the single precision. It takes as input a angle and then along the x, y or z coordinate. Let's say we want to rotate around the z coordinate. 0, 0.5 degrees every frame. We run our code and we will see that our triangle is slowly zooming in and then slowly turning around. These two functions are the most important ones when you have to create any source of movement. There is also a, another one that is responsible for the scale. So we have the GL, oh, GL scale. Once again, the normal, the double precision scale and the single precision scale. Let's use the single precision scale then specifying the amount of scale we want to have along the x, y, and z coordinate, 1, 1. Let's actually hide this, so we won't zoom double as much. If we rerun our code, we will see that it quickly zoomed in. So let's actually decrease this a little bit further. And we can also remove the translation along z, make it along x. We rerun our code. Now if we decrease the scale f, we can view it a little better, like so. You see, we are moving, rotating, and slowly zooming in. Alright. Now, these three functions are the fundamental functions when it comes to movement in OpenGL. It will be actually on these movements, instead of inputting a random float number, we will input our mouse key events. Let me actually clear this. And we will move on to the second part, which is handling the mouse events on our window. Now viewing mouse events in Pygame is actually very easy, since there already is a built-in module for that, called the mouse module. You can see there is multiple functions dealing with mouse events, for example, getting the position, the relative position, and so on. We can actually go ahead and print out the position of our mouse. We can also get the pygame.get pressed which will return a boolean of the right, left, mouse wheel and so on. So all the buttons you have on your mouse, depending. If we would run our code, now we can see it's printing already some of the events. For example, if I go on my window, you can see the position of the mouse changing depending on my mouse on the actual window. If I press the right click button, you can see that it's setting now to true. If I press the left click button, it is true now. Now if I press the mouse wheel, now if I press all of three at the same time, all of them get a true value. How do we actually check for these events? Now we can get rid of this. We can also print the event if you want. So we can have an idea on what is happening. So now see, there is window exposed, window none. So if I come back on the window, we can see there is mouse button up. If I move the mouse, you'll see a mouse motion. Now if I press a button, you will see a mouse button down. If I press, for example, the wheel, you will see the mouse wheel. It's actually what we need to handle our events. You can see that there is a mouse motion. So we come down here and say if event.type is equal to a Pygame mouse motion. So if we actually have motion in our window, then we want to check if we actually pressed a left or right button on our mouse. We can do a if pygame.mouse.get pressed 0 if we want to check the left click, or 1 if we want to check the mouse wheel, or 2 if we want to check the right click. We will check the left click. We can also check the right click. If it's pressed, let's say we actually print the event.rel. We will be printing this value right here. Let's actually rerun the code. It is still printing because of this one right here, so let me actually remove it. Now, you see that nothing is being printed. Even if I do a mouse motion on our window, nothing is getting printed. If I press the right button, nothing is getting printed. But if I press the left button, now you see we start printing out the relative positions of our mouse. And now this is the first step to introducing movements to our OpenGL scene with the mouse. Now, we know what the event.rel is actually, so it's the relative x and y position of the mouse. Now we can actually omit this. Now we can add the rotation with gl rotate f. 
specifying the event.rel of either x or y. We can choose, for instance, x. So why are we choosing around the z-axis? Because actually the coordinate system in our OpenGL scene is y pointing upwards, x now pointing to the right, z is pointing towards us. Now if we would click on the mouse, you can see that is working. Our triangle is indeed rotating, but it's in the opposite side that we want to. We can easily fix this by adding a minus here. You can see that this time it is rotating as we want from left to right, right to left. Now, following the same logic, we can easily add the mouse wheel event doing a if event.type is equal to pygame.mousewheel. We are going to define a scale which will be equal to event.y. Now you'll see in a moment what this event.y is. Let's actually print event in this case. Print event. Remember when we use the mouse wheel, we will print the event. You can see that it's defined within y and then in x. If I am scrolling upwards, the value of y is increasing. If I'm scrolling downwards, it is decreasing. Now that is the vertical scroll. x is for the horizontal scroll, which I don't think most of us have. Now that's why we are doing event.y, right? Let me reclose this, omit this print statement, and we just add the gl scale f of our scales. Let me actually decrease the value of the scale. We want it to scale around, let's say, plus one comma something, let's say, and then minus one something. So remember here we have values of 2, 1 and so on. So if you divide it by 10, it's 0, 1 and then 0, 2, etc. If we add a 1, it will be a 1.1, 1 1.2, 1 1.3, etc. So we're even zooming 30%, de-zooming by 30%, etc. Now if I rerun the code, you'll see that now it's much better. We can actually zoom out or zoom in as well as rotate our triangle. All right, now let's see how we can actually rotate our object in 3D using an actual STL file. So for this, I'll create another file. All right, so here we are again. Let's actually create another file. Let's call it stlmovements.py. It will use the exact same principle of the code we just saw. So let me actually copy this and then paste it here. Now. We want to display an STL file. Remember, we want to import the STL module. So from STL import mesh. Now we've already seen in the part two of the series how to actually load an STL file. So it's very easy. You just gotta import the STL module, specify the STL path, load up the model with the mesh.mesh, .mesh, then from file, specify the vectors as well as the normals. And that's basically it. So let's actually do that. We will copy down this, calling our STL file. Now here I've prepared a folder where I put all the STL files, specifically a STL file called sphere.stl. So let's actually load this file. Instead of drawing the triangles, we want to draw our STL. So let's call it draw STL. It will take as input a set of triangles. Now since we have a group of triangles, we have to loop through each of the triangles, so for triangle in triangles, and then we will shift this one. Now if we go ahead and omit this and specify here that we want to draw an STL of our vectors, remember this is what the triangle is, we run our code, uh, there is our sphere. Now let's actually only display the outline of the triangles. To do so, you come down to the function we just defined calling the gl polygon node, then specifying the gl front and back, and the gl line. Now if we would rerun our code, de-zoom a little bit, we can see that we uploaded our sphere. It's optional, but it's still better to center our STL object to the origin of our coordinate system. We can do this in multiple ways, but I think the easiest one to do is, let's say we define a new function called shift center, will take as input a set of vectors. In this case, vector is also a triangle. So let's actually call it triangles. Now here we need actually to import as well the NumPy module. So import NumPy as NP. So in order to shift our STL file to the center, we actually need to read its min and max points. So min p is equal to and max p is equal to. We use the np.max function on the triangles. 
specifying the axis to 0. And then same goes for the min point using the min function. Okay, now the center of our STL file will be defined by the minimum point plus the maximum point divided by 2. And we will return the triangles minus the center. So this in a way will shift our STL file to its center. Now we call this function, let's say we call it right here, shift center of vectors, is it vectors? Of vectors, yeah. So we'll say triangles is equal to shift to center of vectors. Now let's change this to triangles, all right? Now if we rerun our code, we can see that the sphere is now centered around our origin. Now the next step is actually to define the new rotations of our 3D STL file. Now when we move the mouse from left to right, imagine that we have an X, the X axis is horizontal, whilst the Y axis is vertical, right? So if we move from X, from the left side of X to the right side of X, in a way we want to rotate along the Y axis, and when we are moving from the top to bottom along the y-axis, in a way we want to rotate along the x-axis. So with that in mind, let's actually implement it. So we have the rotation along the x-axis. So gl rotate f of event dot rel of 0, then 0, 1, 0. So this is rotation along the y-axis with the X mouse, let's say, position. And then same goes for the rotation along the X axis. We read the Y mouse movement, and this will be along X mouse movement. Now, if we run our code, we will see that we have our sphere. There is a rotation along the X axis, and then a rotation along the Y axis. So this is basically what we want to see in this part of the video. Hope you learned something from it. If you have any suggestions, let me know in the comment section. Thank you for watching and peace!